Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Are you stressed out about going to school this, this week? No. No, you're not? Some people are. Some people are stressed about school starting this week, or we get stressed out when we have a job. We get stressed out about being a parent, about being a mom and dad. That can be stressful with all these responsibilities that we have resting on these shoulders. It can be stressful. Uh, we see in, in our lesson for today, and the focus of our sermon is going to be about how King Solomon wisely went to the Lord when he looked at this task of being king of a nation. Uh, and how God invites us through prayer to come to him too when we look at all of the responsibilities and duties that we face to go to him in prayer and ask him to give us what we need uh, to manage through them and make it through each day. Uh, our opening hymn uh, will start our service, God of Grace and God of Glory. May God bless our worship here today. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Fellow children of God, every day, every week, we endure much pain and strife. We have come to the house of the Lord for healing and care. But as we do, we must confess that it is because of who we are, sinful human beings, and the sin we commit that separate us from our holy God. We ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done evil both against you and against my neighbors around me. For all this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me. God, our Heavenly Father, does not treat us as our sins deserve. He is merciful, and he has given us his only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our sin away. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
You are at peace with God. Amen. Amen. In that peace, let us praise the Lord. to ask according to your will that we may never fail to obtain the blessings you have promised through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. please be seated Our first lesson is taken from 1 Kings chapter 3, beginning with the fifth verse. This will serve as the basis for our sermon later on in the service. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. This is God's word. We join in the hymn response, In trembling hands, Lord God, we hold.
lesson is taken from Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 6, verse 17 and following. Here, the Apostle Paul reminds us that our true treasure waits for us in heaven, and that while we live here on earth, we use what blessings God gives to us, what physical blessings we have uh, for the promotion of his glory and for the good of others. Paul said, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and the opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and in doing so have wandered from the faith. Grace be with you. This is God's word. We join in the hymn response. our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Holy Gospel for this Sunday is taken from Matthew chapter 13, beginning with the 44th verse. Here Jesus reminds us that all the treasure in the world, it pales in comparison for the one that he has stored up for us in his storehouse of heaven. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they, his disciples replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of our risen Lord. We join in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our children's bell choir. children to come forward because they left for the children's message. So, good job. We're going to have children's message. Good job, you guys. That sounded so beautiful. That sounded wonderful. Wow. I thought that was so pretty. The way you guys played those bells for Jesus love you. That sounded great. Have you, did you wonder why are we why are we why were you playing bells? Why are we why are we why do we make music in church? For God? For why? What's God ever done for us? Well, why? For why? For sins. Die on the cross. Yeah, he for all the thank you. He's done everything that we need. He's done everything that we need. Yeah, he's the one who makes sure that we have souls. We have food. And like Thomas said, he's the one that took all of our sins away. He took all the wrong things we've ever done. And so 
out of thankfulness, like Gershom said, we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you to God. And one of the ways that we did it, that you guys helped all of the people here today say thank you to God was by playing your love. Thank you so much for doing that. That was wonderful. We all thought it was great. And so did God, too. That was so pleasing that you, that you praised God with thankful hearts. All right, let's fold our hands now. Because another thing that we do is we pray to God to thank him for everything that he does. Okay? Let's thank him. Dear God, thank you so much for blessing us with all that we need, and thank you for giving us the ability to say thanks and praise you. Help us to continue to have thankful and praise-filled hearts each and every day, now and always, because of the wonderful salvation and forgiveness that you've given us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys can go back with Miss Patty, or you can go back and sit with your parents. Go back, go back for Kids Church with Miss Patty, or you can go back with your parents. And we'll continue with our hymn of the day, Lord, teach us how to pray aright. Christ our Lord. Amen. The words for our consideration are taken from 1 Kings chapter 3. Please bow your heads for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Little children of God. I think almost every parent, for sure almost every parent, can remember holding their child for the very first time. Remember what that was like? Oh. Wow. How awesome to have that little miracle in your hands. Oh, what a wonderful blessing, a wonderful treasure that God had given you. But then reality sunk in, right? Ever come, maybe it was for, maybe it was the, the day he came home from the hospital. Now what am I supposed to do? I, I, I'm a parent. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm supposed to take care of this little kid? I gotta feed it. I gotta gotta change it. Uh, I, I gotta make sure it has everything it needs. Oh, sooner or later, once you come down from that high, that joy of oh, this is such a beautiful little baby, the reality sinks in of all the responsibility that you have resting on your shoulders. 
Uh, as you look around in, in this room, I see a, a room full of people with a whole bunch of responsibilities. I see parents that have to care for their children who don't get much sleep at night, worrying and wondering, hoping that they're okay, praying they're okay. I see students who are heading back to school, who got a homework load, got a whole bunch of activities, a whole bunch of new responsibilities as you start high school. I see employees that have demanding jobs, demanding bosses, demanding tasks to do, a whole bunch of responsibility that's been entrusted to them. I see Sunday school teachers who've been asked by this congregation to serve their brothers and sisters in Christ and feed God's little lambs. I see congregational leaders who've been asked by their brothers and sisters in Christ to make sure our congregation is going in the right direction. I see a pastor who's been asked by his brothers and sisters in faith to watch out for their souls. I see a whole room full of people with a whole lot of responsibilities. When you stop and think about all the different duties that you have with your job, with your family, with your church, with your life, do you ever feel inadequate? Unprepared? You go through a week carrying a, a, a chain of guilt around your neck because of the times that you weren't the, the greatest parent when you weren't the best employee, you let things slip through the cracks. What are we going to do? What do we do when we have all these different responsibilities in our life? Well, in our lesson, we, we meet a young man, who calls himself a little child, who had something far greater than just caring for himself or his own family or even a city or a company. Solomon had been placed on the throne of Israel. He was to be their king, their spiritual leader, their military leader. He was to be their provider, their protector. Millions. Think about that. Millions of people were depending on him doing his job well. Millions of lives were affected by the decisions that this man made. Wow. <coughs> Who's up for such a task like that? All those people, all those responsibilities banking on you. Well, Solomon, he recognized humbly that he, he wasn't worthy of such a task. And so he went to the source of strength, the Lord, and asked him, he prayed to him that, God would bless him, that he would equip him with what he needed to carry out his <coughs> responsibilities, his duties. And that's really what we see in our lesson for today, a model example for us. Even though we're, we aren't kings or queens of countries, but as we go through our life, as we face all of a, a, a plate full of responsibility, to pray teaches us how to pray that God equip us with what we need to carry out our responsibilities. You know, it's never happened to me, and it probably will never happen to you, where you were sitting in your living room and all of a sudden the limousine pulls up and a, a rich oil sheik from the uh, Middle East comes out and he hands you a blank check already signed and says, go ahead, just fill in the number. That happened to you at all? Anyone? Me neither. That's basically what God did for Solomon in our lesson. He gave him a blank check. Uh, only this check wasn't limited to gold or silver. He said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Go ahead. The sky's the limit. Ask for whatever. Solomon's response, his prayer, is one of gratitude for being given this opportunity. It's one of graveness and also one of humility. First, he starts off his prayer thanking God for everything that he's done for him in the past. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on this, his throne this very day. And we know David wasn't a sinless man, but 
what Solomon do, is doing in this prayer is thanking God for the patience and mercy he showed to his father and has shown to him up to this point. Thank you, God. Thank you, first and foremost, for everything you've done to me leading up to this point. Thank you for the Father that you've given me who raised me in the Word. Thank you for blessing me with this wonderful opportunity to be your king, the king of your people. Thank you, God, for making me who I am. It's a wonderful way for us to begin our prayers when we're asking God to equip us to thank him first and foremost. Thank you, thank you, God, for what you've done so far to me. Thank you, God, that you gave me Christian parents that brought me to church and made me come, made me come to Sunday school. Thank you, God, that you, you've blessed me with a wonderful education that's given me the job that I have here today. Thank you, God, for the, your, your, your open hand, which has given me all the different talents and abilities that I need to be a good and faithful employee. Thank you, God, for the wonderful family, the Christian family that surrounds me in my congregation, the friends that have been brought up with that shaped me and molded me into who I am. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for what you've done so far. And because you've been so faithful, so wonderful, so great in the past, I know I can ask you for whatever I want, anything that I need. Solomon's request then continued on a, a very serious tone. He got, I think the reality started to sink in about him being king. He says, now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. Responsibility, reality started to sink in for Solomon. He had some pretty big shoes to fill. The man he was succeeding, his father, was a great war hero. Remember, he's the guy that defeated Goliath, that huge, impossible giant. David was a popular king with the people, beloved by the, by the people. He was a man after the Lord's own heart. Those are big shoes to fill coming in. Solomon's charged with uh, watching over God's people. A people, he says, there's too many of them even to count, Lord. How many people are banking on me? The big responsibility to be their, their military leader, their spiritual leader. All those people looking to him. All those people depending on him. Solomon said, I, I'm only a little child. How can I do this? I want to serve you the best I can, but how can I do this with who I am? Solomon's attitude was one of a servant's heart. He wanted to be faithful to his God and he wanted to be faithful to his people because that's where the Lord placed him to serve. This was his time. This was his role. This was his responsibility and he wanted it to, to do it to the best of his ability. Like Solomon, you are where God wants you to be. He's placed you in that role, in that position. He's giving you this opportunity, this responsibility to serve. Now, even though we might not be kings or queens, our, our honor might not be as visible as his, it's no less important in the eyes of our Lord. When our God looks at us, he wants us to serve him faithfully, and that's our desire too. Having been bought by Jesus' blood, we desire, as the kids said before, we want to say thank you. We want to serve him in, in the best way that we can. It's a serious responsibility to get married, become husband and wife. It's a serious responsibility to be a, a student, to be doing your homework faithfully. It's a serious responsibility to be an employee or an employer. It's a serious responsibility to be a Sunday school teacher or a congregational leader. It's a serious responsibility that you have before you. Like Solomon, we recognize our inadequacies 
that if we were left to do these things by ourselves, on our own, God knows where we'd end up. Who knows how well we would fare. So Solomon wisely asked, recognizing his own sinfulness, his shortcomings, his failures, he asked the source of strength for help to do his job faithfully and well. He said, so give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? Solomon sought that practical gift, the perfect gift for a king, literally a heart that hears, a heart that hears with understanding. Lord, give me the ability to decide what's right and wrong, make wise decisions, to understand the problem, and then make a God-pleasing choice. Solomon's heart was for the Lord and for his people. He wanted to serve. When we pray to God to ask him to, to bless us and, and equip us with what we need for our duties, our responsibilities in life, pray for those practical gifts. Pray for patience as a mother. Pray for courage as you go to, the, as you go to school and stand up for your faith. Pray for strength. Pray for confidence in what God has given you. The gift of hearing, the gift of wisdom, that might be more practical for some than others. For those of you entering college, that's a very practical gift to be praying for, to be asking for. But as you analyze where you're at in your life, your different responsibilities, your different duties, like Solomon, our goal is to serve our God and to serve one another faithfully. So we ask God specifically to equip us with what we need to carry out those responsibilities and duties. Check out the Lord's answer to Solomon's request. The Lord was pleased that Solomon asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have, been asked, have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Solomon realized that this life wasn't all that he had to live for. That his treasure was stored up, laid away in heaven. But during his time as king, during his time as the Lord's servant here on earth, he wanted to serve his God and the people that God had entrusted him faithfully. His heart wasn't in for his own glory. His heart wasn't out for the attention, the spotlight to be brought on him. His heart was there for others. Does that sound like anyone that we know? Solomon's greatest descendant. Jesus Christ. Jesus, the king of heaven and earth, didn't live his life for himself. He didn't die on the cross to bring God's glory or God's love to himself. He died and gave his life so that God's glory God's face would look favorably upon you. Jesus was always there to serve us through his life, through his death, and he gave his innocent blood to make up, to sacrifice, to cover up for all of our inadequacies, all our shortcomings, all our failures and faults. That's the faithfulness that Solomon remembered at the beginning of his prayer, the, the forgiveness that God bring, brought to his father David, to himself, and to all of God's people. God's response to his servant Solomon was, was, uh, was just what Solomon needed. In the very next chapter, we hear this. God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight in a breadth of understanding as measureless as the sands on the seashore. 
Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the men of the east and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. God, God answered his servant's prayer. When you think about all the responsibilities that you have in your life as, as a mom, as an employee, as a student, that can be overwhelming. It can be daunting. But it's good because it reminds us how inadequate we are. It reminds us of our sinfulness that we confess, as we confessed earlier in, in, in uh, the service. But the comforting fact we have is that we don't face anything in this life, nor do we face anything in eternity on our own. We have a God that has made us his children. A God who loves us. A God who has served us with his life and his death and resurrection. When you think about all those roles, all those responsibilities that you have, your duties and everything resting on your shoulders, like Solomon, we too can drop our chin in prayer. We can enter the throne room of God, robed in Jesus' righteousness, and ask him to equip us with what we need to carry out those duties. And the wonderful comfort that we have from God's word is his promise, I will bless you too. May God bless us as we serve him and others. May he give us what we need to carry out those responsibilities now and forever. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> This time our ushers will be handing out our friendship registers. We ask that you please fill those out to mark your, uh, your day here with us today. And also uh, after that we'll have the opportunity to bring our offerings of thanks to the Lord. stand for the prayer of the church. In our prayers this morning, we will be including a, a few special prayers. One, prayer of thanks for Luana Lum as she celebrated her 10th birthday this past week. We'll also be offering a prayer of thanks uh, for giving for Bob and Sarah Englander as they celebrate their 37th wedding anniversary. A prayer of thanks uh, for Hayden Stolpa, that would be Pat and Roy's grandson. Uh, Hayden had been taken to the hospital for some tests, but they went well, and he's uh, recovering, uh, recovering well. We'll also be praying uh, for uh, healing for Herta Mothi. Uh, she's, uh, just admitted, she was just admitted to uh, the hospital. Um, we'll be praying for R.T. Gross uh, with an upcoming surgery this Tuesday. And we'll also be praying for Pastor Nate uh, Scharf and his wife Hannah 
Uh, Pastor Scharf is my cousin. Uh, he was the recruiter from Luther Prep that came down uh, about a year ago, uh, so you might remember him there. Uh, they just uh, lost a child, so we're going to be uh, praying for them as well. We take all these requests to the, the throne of God in prayer. O Lord our God, you are wise and powerful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day you open your hand and provide for the needs of your children on earth. We praise you for every grace and blessing. Strengthen your church in all the world. Let your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. Use our ministries and offerings to extend your healing and your hope. We bring you our requests for the various structures of our society. Bless our national, state, and local governments. Grant us civil servants who are worthy of honor and respect. Grant prosperity to our businesses and industries. Give employers a sense of fairness toward their workers and employees a feeling of joy and pride in their workmanship. Help us find satisfaction in all work well done. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your created order. Give us teachers and students who pursue excellence. Strengthen the families of our country. Give fathers and mothers a renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Lead us to love one another as you have loved us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the 10 years that you have blessed Luan alum and watched over her. We thank you for the waters of holy baptism through which you welcomed Luana into your, your arms. Uh, we ask that you would continue to bless Gerard and Catherine as they raise her. Continue to uh, help Luana make wise decisions and always be guided by your word. We thank you, Lord, also for watching over Hayden Stolpa uh, during the test he, under, test he underwent in the hospital. We uh, thank you for the doctors and nurses who offered him care and for answering our prayers and, and helping and granting him healing and relief. We ask that you continue to be with him and send your holy angels to watch over him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, the 37 years that you have blessed Sarah and Bob Englander together with. Uh, we thank you for planting them together in your word and, and uh, looking to your word for guidance and strength uh, for those 37 years of their marriage. Continue to uh, bless them and watch over them and, and, and uh, continue to help their, their marriage flourish as they comfort and uh, encourage one another with your holy word. Heavenly Father, we uh, ask that you watch over R.T. Gross and Herta Mwathi uh, as they head into the hospitals. Uh, please bless them with their physical ailments, Lord, and remember them, remind them during these uh, trying physical times of the spiritual aid and hope uh, that, that you have won and secured for them uh, through your death on the cross. Lord of life and death, we ask that you be with uh, Nate and Hannah Scharf and their family uh, as they mourn the loss of their child and brother. Uh, we ask that um, you continue to give their family healing and hope uh, and comfort them with the, the wonderful news of your love and your compassion. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of little children uh, and, and that you, Lord, have entrusted us as parents, uh, them, into our care. Uh, we know, Lord, though, that they, they are only gifts of ours for a moment, but they are yours for eternity. And may that news comfort Nate and Hannah uh, during this time uh, as they rest uh, securely knowing that August is in heaven with you. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions in silent prayer.
Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus taught, with the confidence that you will hear and with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has called us to be his own so that we may live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <coughs>
seated and come forward at the direction of our ushers. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, <coughs> given on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the remission of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given on death for forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given death for forgiveness of all of your sins. Take a drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven.
This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given in death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. for the remission of all of your sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. stand for the hymn of thanks found on the top of page 15 in our service folder. sacrament. Through this gift you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our comfort, we are weighed down by the enormity of our sins. But you have graciously invited, Come to me, all you that are weak and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. We are weighed down by pressures at work, by deadlines and meetings and projects that need to be done. But you have graciously invited, Come to me, all you that are weak and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. We are weighed down by duties at home, by housework and yard work, by cooking and cleaning, but you have graciously invited, Come to me, all you that are weak and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. We are weighed down by activities and practices and by not having enough time for everything, but you have graciously invited, Come to me, all you that are weak and carrying heavy burdens,